Peace and blessings, Israel. My name is Aram from the Boston Church, located in the Boston region. All praises. And Lord willing, today's topic is how can I find a good spouse? And uh, this will be the conclusion of this particular topic. And uh, let's start with the prayer, then uh, we'll get right on into the scriptures. All right. So let's meditate in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahweh Shai, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless us in all things. And grant unto us your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through your Holy Spirit, that we may learn, receive, and apply your scriptures all the days of our life. Thank you, Father, in Christ's name we pray. Hamasha Yaki Yahweh Shai, the anointed Savior. The water, meaning thank you. Aman. All right, Israel. So how can I find a good spouse? For brothers, the scriptures give us all the information, all the lowdown on what to look, in, look for in a woman, how to become a proper man to even be in position to have a woman, how to make sure that we're looking for the situation that the Bible called marriage, the sanctity of marriage, that we may be heirs together unto the grace of life with your wife. For the sisters, the same thing, right? Dealing with a brother who's, who's a man of understanding, a man who's about the most high in Christ, whose foundations is shown in his behavior. He's been proven before you actually hook up, or they want to say hook up, or marry this man, right? So we went through all that information in the scriptures. Okay, so we're going to touch on some repeat scriptures, but then we're going to get on some new scriptures. And Lord willing, hopefully all this information will help brothers and sisters. But I know one thing, one thing that's common in this whole thing of brothers and sisters coming together in marriage is patience. Patience, humility, trusting that these scriptures are right so that we don't go to the left or that we don't go to the right. And then once we do these things and go astray, then try to bring it back to the scriptures afterwards, sometimes it never goes down that way. Because once you're in fornication, you can't bring it to marriage. Fornication is fornication. Marriage is marriage. Right? So that's why you want the right spouse that comes from the Lord. For what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. So the Most High God, right? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, right? Some say Yah or Yah or, 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 Yah, or Yahovah or Yahweh, whatever, right? What he joined together through his anointed Savior, Yahweh Shai the Christ, let not man put asunder. See? So we go into it as brothers, we go into it looking for a sister that's going to fit this bill. She's going to fit and suit these characteristics in the scriptures. For a sister, we're looking for a brother and patiently, okay? We're holding ourselves patiently to someone that's worthy enough for you to be his helpmate for life unto the grace of life, the kingdom to come, eternal life. That's a tall order, man. That's how you know you shouldn't be laying down with just any old body. Same thing for brothers. We talking about somebody you spend an eternity with. That cannot be, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry or or Shakita, who sucks her thumb, chewing on bubble gum, right? She don't know the first thing about being a woman. So we got to learn, Israel. All right, let's get into these scriptures. And uh, we begin a very good response. Brothers and sisters, you know, very thankful and appreciative of the scriptures that's been going out. A lot of brothers and sisters have been saying similar things, how it's helped them to understand better and how to approach things, how to be more patient, how to how to trust in what the Lord's saying, right? And that's the whole purpose of these, cl these classes. So all praises to the Most High in the name of Christ for that. All right. And so let's go to uh, the Apocrypha real Well, let's go to Hebrews 13 and 4. We read it last week, but let's go back to it. Hebrews 13 and 4. Right. 
All right, so Hebrews 13 and 4, right? We had Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see, so the Bible promotes marriage, right? That's what was instituted when in the day man it was created, right? All the creation was created, right? The fifth day, the Most High created the sea animals. The sixth day, the Most High created the land animals. And the, the one that stood out the most was the species of man. That was to be the dominant species. And different from the animal world, where they come together and reproduce and, and move forward, the Most High said, no, for mankind to reproduce, he's got to reproduce only one way in the sanctity of marriage. Don't care what the world say. Society is on a one-way ticket to destruction. So marriage is, is honorable in all from the beginning and the bed undefiled. So the Most High promotes the sexual intercourse and intimacy that comes with a male and his female in love and in cherishing one another, right? And in the right body, mind and spirit together right it's all clicking on all cylinders israel the lord is behind it look at that he said in the bed undefiled because you married man but what but whoremongers and adulterers god will judge so when we talk about the marriage we talk about the marriage as concerning the holy scriptures not this western european type marriage loaded with paganism and Satanism, the man subjecting himself to the woman, getting on one knee, putting a ring on her finger, all that is satanic. Now, I know we didn't know better, but the Bible has never promoted that type marriage, right? We talking about the marriage of the scriptures. Now, if we dealing in the marriage of the scriptures and then somewhere along the line for legal reasons, we gonna get a marriage certificate. That's different. But ain't nobody gonna have me bow to no woman. And I'm not putting a ring on that finger because where you read that in the Bible? Nah, the only jewelry I'm putting on my woman is scriptural. You could have jewelry, what you can't have is idolatry. That's the difference, you see. And you can't clean up idolatry, Israel. Well, yeah, I'm gonna put the ring on her left index finger but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's because I love her. It's not because of what, how the world told us to do it. It's, you're lying to yourself, you see. Because it's the, very, it's the world who told you to put it on that specific finger. But you're lying to yourself. And don't understand where all that's coming from. It goes back to uh, Satan. For the man to bow to that one knee and put that ring on her finger like that. That, that's a reenactment of how Adam bowed down to his woman Eve and let her run things. And it was a reversing of roles in order to be satanic. You, they couldn't follow Satan and the serpent, so we understand. They couldn't uh, get the wisdom coming from them because he said it was wisdom, right? We know it's a lie, right? And so in order to get any kind of philosophies from Satan, you got to be satanic. And so Satan went to the woman first and bypassed the husband. That's that's out of order. Right? Because according to the most high's law, the most the man is the head of the whole house, starting with his woman. He the head over the woman, the house, the kids, the dog, the cats, everything. But Satan do the reverse. And push that feminist. Wh wh I hate saying feminist because they don't change the meaning of that as well. Out of mockery. Okay, the true uh, definition for feminist is a woman being a woman and actually exemplifying, putting an emphasis on being a woman. That's the true definition of a feminist. But when you talk feminist these days, they don't switch the meaning that a feminist is someone against being a woman. She's about being bold and aggressive like she's a man in a woman's body. 
So the devil loved it to switch the terms and play games. So all we saying is marriage is honorable and all and the bed undefiled, right? Is that a marriage the Lord talking about? Is the marriage between that Israelite man and his Israelite woman who's the helpmate to the man, right? And so we refrain from anything dealing with idolatry, okay? We had wedding feasts. We had all, all that, but we didn't have idolatry. That's the difference. We didn't bow to one knee. We didn't do none of that garbage. Okay. Now, for legal reasons, right, when a man want to uh, make sure that society recognizes the marriage that he already got with his wife from the Lord, he may have to go to the town or city where he's at and get a, a document, right, marriage license. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We ain't doing no ceremony. We ain't having no man give some stranger some justice of the peace. Who's that? Justice of the peace. Who's that? Where it say that in the Bible? The Bible say the parents marry the children off, the daughters off to the, to the husband. So we ain't doing none of that, right? But the problem is these cities and towns, you got to go to the justice of the peace and then he got to sign the paperwork and so forth. In some of these towns, they say, you want a ceremony included when you get this li uh, license, this marriage license? We say, no, we don't need none of that. Just pay the money, give me the license. That way I know if I, I was to pass on or anything even before passing on, something going on, that they could recognize this woman here to, to be legally tied to me. Okay, tied to my inheritance and whatever else that belonged to me. You say, all praises. All right. So marriage is honorable and all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So you see the two extremes. The Bible promotes marriage that's honorable, but he's against whoremongering. That's a male fornicator. And adulterers, that's a female fornicator. Right? God will judge. Right? So pretty much whoremongers and adulterers and adulteresses let me say that right because the male version is a whoremonger an adulterer for the female is a whore and adulteress right and the most high say thou shall not um i'm trying to get it right how he said in the, in the, uh, the law there should be no sodomites in israel nor sodomitis meaning Horish women up in Israel, right? So that's all that funky business, right? We all doing all that nasty business from them witches, right? We ain't supposed to do all that, okay? The Most High gave the male his genital part, gave the female her genital part, and that's it. He ain't never said mess with the um. Your system of that that removes waste. You understand? That's what your uh, anal is for. That's the exit point for re waste removal. So ain't nothing supposed to be going up in that. Ain't no fingers, nothing. No tongue, no fingers, no nothing. It's supposed to be going up there. Now, sorry we got to say it that way, but they done went to our children. Disregard the parents and showing the children that kind of sexuality in the cartoons and in the folly. So now we haven't had to have this conversation earlier and earlier with our own children. We don't do those things, Ezra. Okay. That backside is where you sit on that toilet and you handle your business. You see? That's it. So I don't know why you would even want to go back there. It, the, the smell of it alone should tell you you don't belong back there. But you got to be under the spell of a witch for that to somehow smell good to you. Boo-boo smell good to you. Do that sound right? That don't even sound right. How a child know they put pampers on a child and they know that when the child pamper is what? Soiled. We got to change the child pamper. But when we become adults, we dumb.
We go back, we regress. We don't know what that is coming out the backside of somebody. And you're going to mess with that. We got to repent, Israel. So marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay? So let me get that law. I'll get it for you in a minute. So I, I hate quoting something and then uh, not be able to quote it verbatim. But uh, let's move on from there. Let's go to the Apocrypha and, and I'll get that other scripture for you in the law. So we're going to the Apocrypha now. Ecclesiasticus 7. And we're still on the topic of the importance of marriage. That's the honorable thing coming from the heavens. Anything outside of that is whoremongering, adultery, and fornication. Don't care what kind of spin they put on it. Hooking up. That's my boo, my shorty. Uh, we just kicking it. We could be kicking it all right. So we got to repent, Israel. So we go on Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. We want the seventh chapter. And we kicking it. We're going to kick that bucket in a minute. This most I said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will what? Judge. We asking for death. So we had Ecclesiasticus, right? And we had the seventh chapter. But we want the 23rd verse. And we'll start from there. So Ecclesiastes 7, 23. Hast thou children, instruct them, and bow down their neck from their youth. So it's the parent's job to raise the children. It's not the parent's job to go to public school and blame the, the teachers at the school and complain and give the teachers a hard time. That's only going on with this whole educational system because we in captivity. But truth be told, we ain't depending on society to teach our children. The Bible says your job to teach your children. Hast thou children? Instruct them. It's your job. And bow down their neck from their youth. Ain't say be their friend and let them talk back and answer again and and trick you. I see children lie straight to their parents. The parents know they lying and don't do nothing about it. And not only don't do nothing about it and give them some sort of uh, re recompense, they end up rewarding the child. So if that's happening from the, the age of a child, what's going to happen when that child become an adult? What did you just create? You see, this is why society's upside down. Because we're not following the laws of God. We got to instruct our children and humble them. That's, that's, a, that's that love and nourishing and chastening, instruction at times. They may have to get a physical discipline or sometimes a restriction, take away privileges. Right? But that's the love. And it's from their youth, Israel. Not, oh, he's too young. Well, where do we think the word youth come from? Young. Oh, he's too young. He ain't too young to disrespect his parents. He ain't too young to, to, to be out of order, inappropriate behavior. So we got to stop making excuses and get scriptural, Israel. So it said, hast thou daughters? Now it's getting specific. You got any, amongst children, you got females? Young daughters? Have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful toward them. So part of the instruction and in rearing them up, you got to make sure you're on top of what they put on and how they carry themselves. And be not cheerful, meaning easy going and just lackadaisical and letting them run it. If they can have a care of their own body, the scripture wouldn't be in here. So we as parents got to have a care of their body. That's not in a young female. You have to teach that. So she learns discretion. She should not be running with the boys like she's one of the boys. You have to teach her that. Marry thy daughter. So now from a young daughter, she's at the 25th verse. She's at the age, marriageable age. So now when it's time to marry her off, you to marry thy daughter. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. So what is marriage? 
a weighty matter, Israel. It's not a game. You understand? This is why you don't let children decide who they're going to marry. Right? You have to, the, the, the marriage, before we get to 25th verse, you should have already been instructing them to the 23rd verse. From the 23rd verse where it says, you instructing them from a young age, from their youth. So that's what I mean. You ain't letting an immature child pick their mate because they're not going to pick their mate. They're going to fulfill lust and they're going to have a bunch of mates, which we got fornication. That's what I'm talking about. So that guidance, you're going to marry your daughter off at a marriageable age to perform a weighty matter. That's the law. And it says, but give her to a man of understanding. That's what's hinging on that whole thing. Give her to a man of understanding, a brother that's about the most high. And most likely, because that brother's about the most high, and your daughter's been instructed from her youth to be about the most high, and his Christ, so we clear, it's a perfect match. You see? She gonna wanna be with that man. But if you ain't been doing your job from young, she ain't looking for a man of understanding because she's still out of order. She got no care for her body. She has not been bowed down from her youth. She's buck wild, aggressive, and bold. Don't know life. Thinks she know. And then when the consequences come, it's somehow for you to carry the burden. That's what people have been teaching their children. They groan until the, the problems come, and then all of a sudden, they children again, they need grown folks to bail them out. Well, which one is it? So we cannot play a role in any of that upside-down business. You a child, and you to be raised by your parents, and you to, we ain't waiting for you to figure it out. You to be instructed from your youth, and come Lord willing, come time, you're going to be thankful, man. I'm glad my parents looked out for me. I'm glad the most high through Christ gave me this truth. I'm glad I'm with the proper husband. Look at these other sisters. Mm -hmm. They single. They out of order. They looking for love in all the wrong places. Instead of being instructed from their youth by proper teaching from their parents, they being instructed from... Uh, the hypocrisy of, of the music industry. What do we mean the, hip, the hypocrisy of the music industry? Okay, well, it's, it's, in, it's in plain sight. They just don't figure it out. Beyonce, did she got her man in a relationship? Yes. But she telling sisters, leave your man, burn his stuff, run up his credit card. She ain't doing that with her man. Look at Cardi B. Look at oh, the other crazy one that they popped up the last few years. Megan the stuff. They all in uh, long-term relationships. But they on that music. Telling people, bounce around from one guy to the next, being a horse. Don't be a proper female. One of them talking about she ain't cooked, she ain't clean, she ain't did none of that. Yeah, but that's because you got maids, though. Okay, you don't sell your soul to the devil through that music industry, and they're using you as a pawn to, to teach the young sisters the wrong way. Ain't no man gonna wanna be with that type sister, that the, the sister you singing about. So it's a sabotage, where the only thing the man gonna do with that type of uh, low life type sister who's good for nothing is use her for sex. She just got tricked. And the people singing them songs, they ain't in them situations. But they, the people who write them songs and get the, the, the talent to sing the songs for them, because that's what, that's what that music industry is about. Those that's in the occult write the songs and then they get the singers to sing them. And you in a fantasy world, because even them singers ain't into, uh, some of them ain't even into what they singing about. But they tricking the young sisters. And she bouncing around from one due to the next figure she ain't got to cook and clean yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what's happening you, you you getting all the low lives that's what you're getting 
You're getting all them low lights. Because listen, this thing's spiritual. So the low lights are attracted to them low frequencies, and that's what you're putting out. So that's what's coming. But you put out that high frequency of these scriptures. And you see them low lights be repelled. They out of here. They say, well, I got to follow the Bible. I got to be married. I got to be about the Lord to be with this sister. Psh, I ain't doing that. I plan on messing with 16 to 22 different sisters. <laughs> okay, well, goodbye. You could do that without me. See? So you never get involved with them type of low lives. So is marriage a weighty matter, Israel? Yes. It's honorable and it's weighty. It's serious, man. And she's to be given to a man of understanding. So let's read on. Ecclesiastes 7, 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Now it switches to the sons. Right? Because it talked about your children. It spoke on the female children. Now about what if you got a son? When he come to a marriageable age, has, does he have a wife after his mind what should be his mind the wisdom knowledge and understanding of the most high so that's what he's looking for in a sister a godly woman it said forsake her not but give not thyself over to a light woman what's light woman well that's the same way a female not to be given to a man who lacks understanding a brother should not be in marriage or join to a woman who lacks understanding. She's a light woman, man. She ain't about the most high Israel. She ain't about Christ. She ain't about her husband. She ain't about her people. She's about herself. Now, a lot of these sisters, because they don't know better. So the good news is, because these scriptures is, is, is there and we can learn from them, there's a chance. There's a chance for brothers and there's a chance for sisters to... Who, who lack the understanding, they can get the understanding. It ain't say get married yet. It said get the understanding. <laughs> then in patience and time, the Lord going to put you together with the man of understanding. And for the brother, he going to put the brother together with that sister of understanding. Lord willing, you see. So two scriptures so far, Hebrews 13, uh, Hebrews, yeah, 13 and Ecclesiastes 7 spoke about the importance of marriage okay now i want to get another one proverbs 14 okay when you see a female in, and and you know, that's the problem with society has sabotaged us to see females the wrong way okay where we getting caught up in the beauty of the woman and that's what's being emphasized, right? The, how the woman look, and what when she could, what she can so-called potentially give you, or provide sexually, not realizing that the sexual intimate part is a main part of the marriage, but it it doesn't it's not a main part of the marriage if the Most High is not in it. Now it becomes <laughs> without the Most High in Christ. Is satanic, man. It's whoredom. Okay. All right. So you read about sisters in the scriptures that were godly, and a lot of them you spoke of how beautiful they were. Abigail, Sarah, Abraham's wife, right? Um, Rebecca says she was beautiful. So you read about beautiful sisters and how their physical uh, prowess. But what stood out further? They was about the Most High in Christ. But society says remove the Most High in Christ. And let's just emphasize the physicality. Right? And that's where Israel, that's where we mess up. So Proverbs 14 and 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. See that? So that's why you... you, you this wise woman, what do you think she was before she was a woman? She was that female child that we read about in Ecclesiastes 7. She had to be instructed by those that were before her. Her mother, her father, right? And she learned about the Most High in Christ. She learned about how to properly serve 
a man, right? And helping in her chores and then sometime help learn to cook and all that with her, with her, uh, from her mother, right? And she learned how to deal with her father and her brothers. But what society to reverse it? Well, you have siblings, the, the, the female sibling, just disrespectful to the male sibling, and he ain't got no heart, right? He ain't got no backbone. He just taking it. He effeminate. And she rot railing all over him. And shut up, you stupid. Get on out my room. Right? Just disrespecting that boy. And he getting used to that because he see the mama disrespect the father. See, society? How you going to build a house with this type of dysfunction, Israel? So who cares how the person look? I don't... We don't need that in our life. Lord willing, we're going to end with a few scriptures on that. What the scriptures call these wicked women, the Lord call them dragons. <laughs> you, how many of you ever seen a dragon? You been to the, zoo, to the zoo? And you been to the reptile part of the zoo? They got certain dragon, Komodo dragon, all kind of dragons. The Lord consider a wicked woman like a dragon, man. You get a hold of a wicked woman, you might as well be dead. Just like that dragon put that venom on you. And you about to die in a minute? You, yeah. You get with a wicked woman, it's a slow death. You might as well be dead. So that's what makes this thing weighty, Israel. Don't play around just because, oh, okay, she like me, I like her, and we're going to pass uh, communication, some sort of internet or, or a phone number or whatever. You're going to end up fornicating. Hold these people to these scriptures without the idea of us coming together. And let's see how that works. And if they can't cut the mustard, it wasn't for you. That's how that works. How you think I got with my wife? I ain't, listen, I ain't lowering my standards. Once I learned this, I'm going to say, number one, the mercies of the most high in Christ, because I wouldn't have been in a position to even know how to go about that. I said, enough is enough, man. I need to do this the way the Lord say. And as a young man, you know, I knew certain things because, you know, I had a good structure in my family as far as males and females. But it's still it ain't nothing better than the Bible. Okay. And so when I started learning and humbling myself, I said, I need to be by myself. I need to learn. And it became easier for me. It became easier for me to just be patient. And the time when I wasn't thinking about it, and, you know, I, I don't know who done told, because I done told the story so many times, but I had planned to move out of state. And, I, you know, I was going, I, I was setting up a job out of state, and I was saving up money and every other thing. And that's when I met my wife. And I ended up staying right up here in Boston. And um, from day one, man, I let her know what I was about, and she let me know what she was about. She was down to hear these scriptures, and she was very intrigued, and um, it, it was working, man. I said, not only is she beautiful, but she wanted, you know, she got a beautiful spirit. Let me see where this goes. You know, sometimes things be too good to be true. So I said, hold on, man, this is too good to be true. We're going to see, right? And we just go over scriptures and talk, and I'm going to talk with her parents, and get to know him, and and the Lord blessed it, you know, and 30-something years later, <laughs> I know the exact number, but we on the internet, so 30-plus years later, we still rolling, right, heirs together unto the grace of life, so the Lord don't lie, and I'm so thankful that I trust in these scriptures, you know, we talk about it sometimes, like, man, I'm glad, we glad. We ain't in that roller coaster out in that world trying to find the right spouse because we trusted in these scriptures. And the Lord had mercy for us to even put us on the path to even search the scriptures. So all praises to the Most High in Christ. And so it's only fitting to, to, to pass this information to the rest of our people of our nation so they can be patient and handle business the way the Lord would seem fit and bless the thing, man. Right? It's, it's so many brothers and sisters out here. If we would only humble ourselves to these scriptures, we'd be all right. So let's read it again. Proverbs 14 and 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, 
but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. So you want a woman. Not just build a house. It's a wise woman. I mean, she about the most high wisdom. And she was taught Ezra. You see. Now in the cases where her upbringing wasn't about the wisdom of the most high. But she, she willing to, to learn about the wisdom of the most high. Let her learn first. Okay, put her on to the to the scriptures. Where you got the conference call, you got the videos. Let her hand let her handle that. And see if she interested in that or not. Okay, so some people be trying to trick folks. You know, they be a holy roller for two months. And then you you lack patience and you oh, this is my wife. Oh yeah. All she had to do was trick you for two months and cover her head. Man, we gotta be better than that. <laughs> right? So, oh, one brother, and uh, some of y'all might know what I'm talking about, but one brother in the church right now met the sister when he was going to college, freshman in college, and um, and they met, and they, he was actually working, um, working and going to college, so they both worked at the same job, and uh, they had an interest in one another, Right? And so the brother, at the end of the day, between him and her, they chose the scriptures. And he ended up marrying her. He didn't marry her right away. But he ended up marrying her. I think he, um, I won't get the time frame right, but there was, some, there was a few years in between before he finally made that move. And the whole time, the brother's parents and the sister's parents was became close you know and the the, the the father to the uh sister had already said in the early beginning to the father or the brother he said man if it goes down this any way you know further like i would want your son to marry my daughter he said that early on you see so and they still rolling he said, they rolling. The Lord blessing it. So that was a sister that he can see. She will. She willing to build her build her house, man. Where that man could, could could be that king of that house, and she could be that helpmate, and make him feel like a man. Right? When you ain't got a woman make you feel like a man, brother, you in trouble, man. Your food don't taste right. You can't work right. You 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 constantly depressed. You you can't walk down the corner right. When a man got pro woman problems, man, ain't nothing don't be right. Look at these athletes. They got millions of dollars. They got to be a top athlete, all-star. Then all of a sudden, he'll go through something. The guy can't shoot the basketball no more. He having all kind of issues with his teammates. And you find out what's the, what's the, what's the back story. To, he having problems with his woman. It ain't never fail. Because... Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed on the file. You got the right woman. She already know beforehand. Her job is to build that man's house. You see, make a comfortable home in the wisdom of the Most High. Let's get an example of that. Let's go to the Book of Ruth. And you read about something that was said to Ruth, but it really brought out something about two other sisters. That's why we go on to this scripture here. Let me make sure I get it. Hold on, man. I didn't pass this. Sorry about that. All right. So we at the book of Ruth. We want the fourth chapter. Ruth, the fourth chapter. And we want. The 11th verse. 
Okay, so the brother Boaz ends up marrying Ruth, but this was deal. She was married, but through inheritance. There's a difference here, but that's not my point. I'm trying to emphasize. This is what I'm trying to emphasize in the eleven verse. So Ruth four and eleven, and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, "We are witnesses." See. So they witnessed the documentation, him taking on the inheritance of his family line and taking on Ruth to, to uh, fulfill the law, right? It said, the Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house. Listen, uh, Boaz, the, the Lord make this woman Ruth that's to come in your house. Like who? Like Rachel and like Leah. Now, if you know anything about Rachel and Leah, those were two sisters in Israel, right? That was married to Jacob. And it said, which two did build the house of Israel? Look at that. They didn't take away from the brother. They added to the brother. They built him on all levels. Physically, spiritually, mentally. That's what the woman got to offer. That's how she's built. How the Lord created her to be that helpmate. And to make that man feel like a man and to bring in his children with joy is a, t is a, two t is a team effort. Because they weren't just doing their part and Jacob was just being a tyrant and taking advantage. The Bible don't never talk about that. We already read it. The man got to be a man of understanding. So Jacob being a man of understanding, Rachel and Leah were sisters that build the house with that wisdom and built the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephratah and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. You see? So it talk about what now? How Boaz was the bare seed or, uh, how should I mean? I said, say it right. Ruth was the bed to see the Boaz like those before her. You see that? But you got sisters. They want to show everything, right? And make it about that sexual thing. But you don't want to be, you don't want your womb to be impregnated. How upside down that sound. That's the dumbest thing. But society have made the world dumb. You created with a womb, but you don't want to use your womb, Right? That's a no-no. It's, it's best to be 45 years old with a flat stomach, no kids. And, what, and so what's your, what's your history? What's your background? Whoredom. That's what we want. That's what the Bible talking about. But the, the world say that's a badge of honor. You got your career, right? You got to have your career. You got to have a flat stomach. Got to have your own money. You ain't subject to no man. And guess what? You by yourself. <laughs> you unhappy. You filling in the blanks because you ain't got that wisdom. So you filling in with your own wisdom. It's a trick, Israel. It is a trick to be by yourself with money. See, and the ones talking like that, that'd be the heathen. And you see the heathen that talk, they be with another woman. Or they be at the store buying batteries, if y'all know what I'm talking about. That ain't, listen, this world is going to hell with gasoline drawers, Israel. They in a hurry to take everybody down with them with the wrong advice. Look what this Bible talking about. Sisters being, a woman being compared to the daughters of Israel. That built the house of their husbands. You see that? Rachel, Leah, Tamar. But we don't want to be Rachel, Leah, and Tamar. We want to be Shakita. Uh, 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 or we, even in the names, we want to emphasize some sexuality. Megan the Stallion. Who, who, what is that? Some other sister they were calling Superhead. This is terrible, Israel. That we fell so far from grace that it's somehow a badge of honor to be a whore. 
Not to be a wife, to be a whore. And this is why brothers be complaining, they be dead in jail. Because you've been sabotaged. You've been told to look for the whore. And take advantage and treat the treat the the, the real sisters like dirt and, and, and go chasing a whore. And we wonder why we having problems. That's why a lot of men go to their grave. The Lord justified by they die alone. For all the dirt and the wickedness they done did to sisters. And how they done left kids alone. And, and the Lord do them kind of things. That's why we have to repent. You see, when I was growing up, they said the Lord don't like ugly. Right? Now that's scriptural. Because the Lord, the Most High say that um, in so many ways that when we don't repent, Israel, he said your sins will find you out. They will find you out, man. So brothers that think they're players and they're taking advantage of sisters and they're knocking them off, but they ain't really trying to be a, a, a husband to that sister and a father to them children, that catches up to them brothers. And the same thing for sisters that's making it all about their nails and their toes and their they, they, they body parts and their hair, fake hair at that for some of them. Right? But you don't want to be a wife according to the scriptures. But you want a good man. How you going? <laughs> how you want a good man when you don't even know what good is? You got to first be good to know what it is. Right? And remember, every time we preach, we don't condemn. We just speak truth so people can hear, learn, and receive it so they can repent. But we just tell you the wrong stuff and, and give you sugar-coated, you ain't never going to repent. And so um, there was another one I wanted to get, but we coming close to the end of the class. So um, let me get that one we was talking about. I think it's in Leviticus. Where it speaks about men that we're not supposed to be um, sodomites and sodomitis. That's against the scriptures, Ezra. You see. So hold on. I'm pulling it up on my uh, other Bible. Hold on. Deuteronomy 23.17. I don't like quoting stuff without quoting it verbatim. So Deuteronomy 23. Okay, Deuteronomy 23, and we want 70, okay? So I'm going to highlight this so I don't I have to go through that again. Hold on. All right. All right, so I highlighted it. <laughs> like they say, for office use only, right? <laughs> so that was for my brain. Okay. So Deuteronomy 23 and 17, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. You see that? So you can tell right now that society is on the wrong track. Because what are they pushing in the music industry? What are they pushing in Hollywood? What are they pushing in society in general with the clothing? Don't you know the clothing designers, they into the occult as well? They know how to design clothes to emphasize the body parts. You see? Half shirts and mini skirts and tight pants and all kinds of stuff to emphasize the male and the female body parts. Or with the skinny jeans coming for the sodomites. Because the next sodomite want to see your physique on a man, so he's that crazy. So that what the clothing designers... Okay, skinny jeans. You see? It'd be out of order, man. So let's read it again. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So when I say whore of the daughters of Israel, nor sodom, it means sodomite and sodomitis. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about whoredom in general. Okay. 
So a lot of things, ain't, a lot of relationships that ain't supposed to be together, that's number one. And a lot of the sexual acts that ain't never supposed to be happening, that's number two. That we were talking about earlier, some of that funny business that ain't never supposed to go down in Israel. We ain't supposed to be doing that, Israel. You see? So, let me see something else. Okay. So now let's end with this scripture here. Ecclesiasticus 25. Well, there's, there may be two scriptures we might want to end with. So we let's see how much time we got. So Ecclesiastes 25. Uh, we'll start about the 12th verse. And that's in the Apocrypha, Israel. So Ecclesiastes 25. And we'll start about the 12th verse. Hold on. All right, so Ecclesiastes gets 25 and 12, and we'll skip through a few verses here just to emphasize a few points. Actually, we'll read to 26. We'll read to the end of the chapter. How about that? So Ecclesiastes gets 25 and 12 down to 26. Okay, so it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. So you see what we was talking about earlier? When a man's heart is vexed because of that woman, it affects his whole life. His whole, his whole head is hanging down. He had work. Everybody working and whistling. He had work. He cussing. He mumbling under his breath. He, he's, he getting into arguments with everybody. He, so he's in a bad mood because of that woman. So he said, give me any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. When you got a wicked woman, man, that's one of the worst things in the world. And any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me and any revenge but the revenge of enemies. There is no head above the head of a serpent. So he's talking about the analogy how a serpent is very shifty, right? And unpredictable, right? And move real on, 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 the, on the low. And there is no wrath about the wrath of an enemy. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. You see what the Bible been said? Man, I read this. I said, I couldn't believe this was in the Bible. Because I done seen some of this growing up in, because um, I grew up in New York City. So I done seen, you know, amongst my family, brothers and sisters having issues. And I said, whoa, this scripture was here the whole time, right? This brother, he, he dwelling with a lion and a dragon, man. And she wicked. It said, the wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. See, so the brother sees the, the, the outward beauty. He don't realize that's not nah, you. You don't know what you're seeing. A spiritual brother that's into these scriptures, he going to see what she she looked beautiful, but he going to see through that. She got a dark countenance, man. She's a haughty sister. Ain't no. nah, she ain't for me. Uh, uh I ain't lowering my standards to that. That's a dragon right there. But the fool, he'll, he'll, he'll deal with that. It said her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he hear it, it shall sigh. When he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. So what is he hearing amongst his neighbors? All her wickedness. He's being talked about. He's being mocked. She's embarrassing him. See, he got a bad reputation because his woman loose and wicked and caught up into stuff. See, I don't see seen that. The brother just, he... What's she do now? Man, your woman was up over there hugging up on this guy and and she was sitting with the boys over there and such, such, such. And, and then she was telling the other sisters that 
She don't let no man run her, and she's just embarrassing this brother. Right? 19 verse. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. So you see, when you're talking about wickedness, it ain't talking about all women. It's talking about that wicked woman. It said, let the portion of a sinner fall upon her, meaning let the most high judge her and give her everything she wants. Calamity after calamity after calamity because she chose wickedness rather than being a woman, a righteous woman that build her man house and build a nation, play her role in building her nation, bringing in that man's kids, cooking and cleaning and, 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 and being there for him in so many ways scripturally, right? She's his friend. She's his communicator, right? She's his comfort when he's being dealt with in all kind of ways in society coming at the Israelite man. He at least knows when he goes home, he has someone in his corner, right? But society say, no, you need to be arguing with him like Esther and Sanford and Son. Esther and Fred Sanford, that's, that's the Monica that we want from, from the plantation days. We want the Israelite man, the Israelite woman at odds with one another. 20 verse. As the climbing up a sandy way is to defeat the aged, meaning it's so difficult, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. So you see the, you see the reverse? Here the man quiet, he got humility, but the wife full of words. That puts that man in a difficult situation, just like the age or old elderly trying to climb up a sandy way. It's so difficult, and you see brothers just going through it. That man's 26 years old. You would think he's 46, 66. Because she just rap, 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 running that mouth. Rap, 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 I mean, it gets so bad for some of these sisters. They don't know that a conversation take two. They just talk and talk and talk and talk. The man done tuned out after the first three set, three words because he's like, here she go again. And instead of being a man, he just taking it and taking it and taking it. You say, why? Because he went after this wicked woman. He won patient. Look what he got. So he says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman. So now it's telling you, you want to avoid all this? Don't fall for the beauty of a woman, brother. And desire her not for pleasure. Now, wait a second. We read last week, Proverbs, um, the fifth chapter, that let the woman, your wife, ravish you with her love. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. But here it says, don't look for that. Why is it telling you don't look for that? Because if you if that's what is if that's what you're looking for in a woman, that's all you're gonna look for. You're gonna set your standards low. So it's saying don't let it be about lust. And what a brother said, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. And mercy, we pray that we mercifully, you will mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. See, that's what Tobias did when he was praying with his newfound wife. When you read Tobit 8 and 4. So we're not to just go into this thing looking at the beauty of a woman. We're going to stumble, brothers. And we just desiring her for pleasure. We're going to stumble. She's more than that. But if you if that's all you're looking for, guess who you're going to end up with? All these verses been talking about the same type woman. That wicked woman. That one that's a dragon. Or a roaring lion devouring you, tearing your manhood down. You see? So it said a woman, right? What kind of woman? This wicked woman. See, verse by verse, it keeps describing her. So this wicked woman, if she maintain her husband, the word maintenance come out of maintain. Right? So the woman's job is to be that maintenance. Right? To keep a happy home. To build that man's house, but not for the wicked woman. She ain't trying to be that maintenance. And, and so if she got to maintain her husband, take care of him and be that helpmate. What's her attitude is full of anger. Impudence, right? Impudent, stubborn. 
and much reproach. You see? That ain't what Rachel, that ain't described Rachel or Leah or Tamar. But it describing that wicked woman. She has a problem in her element. She said, I ain't trying to be nobody's woman. I'm going to be my own woman. So if she has to actually maintain her husband. She's full of anger, full of impudence, full of much reproach. She's giving them problems. A wicked woman abateth the courage. You see, when you got a woman chumping you, man, she punking you, right? And you taking it. You know she punking you because if a, if a dude did that to you in the street, you'd have a problem with it. You say, oh, hold on, man. Who are you talking to like that? But when a guy, a woman do it to him, she obeyed his courage, man. She punked that brother. I seen it. I seen it in the, when, from, seen it being done in the world. I've seen it done in the church, Israel. Where the brother got all this courage against brothers. But he ain't got no courage for his woman. She just just treating him like a little boy with a little skull cap with a propeller on top. They go sit down, right? And cut and carrying on. He just a, he just a little, you know, go play with his play doh and and, and get, go suck on them little jolly ranches and just suck his thumb. Just punking him, man. So it said, a wicked woman abateth the courage, and maketh an heavy countenance. See, that's what we were talking about earlier. That man got problems. Say, man, what's wrong with homeboy? He used to be happy and everything. Yeah, well, till he met that woman. And what a wounded heart, man. He just, his mind, he got so many problems and issues ever since he hooked up with that wicked woman. It said a woman that will not comfort her husband. Right? Let's read it again. This is Ecclesiasticus 25, right? And we read in the 23rd verse. A wicked woman abateth the courage, man. She took his courage, man. She carrying her pocketbook, right? Make of a heavy countenance. The guy got all kind of sorrows and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. So you see what the husband needs when he's in distress? The Bible telling you it's giving you the game. It's telling you part of the woman's makeup. She's put on earth to comfort her husband in his problems, not give him problems. She's doing this wicked woman's doing the opposite. She won't maintain him. She got a big problem with it, full of anger. She's chumping him like a chump. She giving him all kind of problems. He, he wounded. She should be comforting him. She not comforting him. Look at that. So a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. That's why these brothers be weaker. They be weak, right? They be, you know, on the, on the internet, they, you know, they got tattoos, they throwing up gang signs. You know, they tough, tough guys, right? I heard one brother told me that uh, he live out in Cali. He said, yeah, man, he, he knew a few essays, you know, essay like some of them brothers in the Hispanic gangs. He said, man, these guys are some tough guys, man. Them guys rumble, man, they get down. He said, but for some reason, these brothers weak through their woman. I said, what? He said, yeah, he knew a few cats like that. I said, well, why am I not surprised? This is a problem within Israel, you see? So... When a woman's showing you these kind of signs, man, you already know this ain't the woman for you. I don't care how she look. 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So what does that tell you? If it's just about the beauty of the woman, you ain't realize sin entered the world through the woman. Eve. See? So at the end of the day, when we talk about Eve, you know, they, she made a grave error. And the Most High allowed them to repent. That's the good thing. But what happened is she went down in history infamously 
that she was the first one to listen to Satan. You see? So you just, as men, man, we can't take it upon ourselves. Just think the, the woman's physical uh, look is all you need to know if that's for you or not. And same thing for sisters, man. Don't make it about your look outwardly. Make it about your look inwardly first. Be about the most high in Christ. So what does scripture say? 25th verse. Give the water no passage. Meaning you got to tighten your belt, brothers, for the ones that's in these situations. You got to you got to man up, man. You ain't got to yell and scream, but you got to be consistent. And you got to come out of wisdom of them scriptures. Are you coming out your own wisdom? That's part of the problem why she running all over you. She running all over. You can see what kind of shoes she wear. It say Skechers right on the brother's forehead. She just knock them over and step all over and say Skechers. So you got to get a water, no pass them. You got to block it. They hold on now. Everything stops. Okay. Ain't going to be no one spoiling you and this and that. We need to talk. Right. And it might be some shockation going on because she's so used to you being a punk. But now you got a Lord with you. And you're repenting, not only to the most high in Christ, but you repent to that woman and say, listen, I ain't showed the true love to you. I've been letting you say and do however. That ain't no love. Now we got to do this right now. Okay? And we can't go back and turn the clock, but what we can do is move forward in a righteous way and start applying these scriptures. See, you got to know how to do this. That's another thing, brothers. I don't know how to talk to a woman. You already got the authority, whether you give it up or not. The most I say, you born with that authority. You a male child. You couldn't give it up if you wanted to. You ain't got to ask to be no man. Just be who you made to be. Hey, uh, wife, can I be a man? Uh, no, only on Tuesdays. And stop that weak stuff. So give the water no passes, brother. Stand up. Like the man say, stand up for your rights. <laughs> Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. But this time you fighting that spiritual thing. And a lot of times, man, I didn't, and I've seen this too, which is a good, a good story, a good ending to this story. I done seen brothers who really didn't know this information. And the woman, she was actually in his corner. But he got that weak nature, so she subconsciously took over and dominating the marriage. But when that brother started learning these scriptures and started applying these scriptures, learning how to walk, talk, think, and act, that woman followed right by. That's all she wanted. She waited for you to be that man. Right? So you got to get the water, no passage. Neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. She not cooking, she not cleaning, she not giving you no TLC, she not there for you in comfort. She not applying no scriptures, that first and foremost, when you giving her liberty. Oh, I'm going with the girlfriends, I'll be back. She go all over the town, all everywhere with her girlfriend, you don't know her whereabouts. When she come back, oh, the, uh, the, 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 the tank of the gas is on E, you need to put some gas in there. Okay, okay, right? They're like buckwheat. Ote. Man, we got to stand up, brothers. So 26, I want to speak on this last one here. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. So you see, there was a time when it just wasn't rolling right. And this woman, this, that wicked like that. The script say, let her go, man. She got to go. Now, wisdom says, because Christ tells in Matthew 19, that he's promoting marriage and bringing things back to the beginning. So the message here is not so much get a wicked woman and then cut her off when she act out her wickedness. No, no, no. According to Christ, because both scriptures go together, we no longer under Deuteronomy 24, that amendment or precept that was put in for divorce. So it puts more of an emphasis on getting with the right woman so that we're not going through all this. You see, it puts an emphasis back on the beginning, how marriage was set up. You get with the right spouse and we're not dealing with getting with a woman only to put her away. 
Christ cleared that all up in Matthew 19. So when this was written, Deuteronomy 24, that precept was still being tolerated. And Christ came later on in Israel's history after Ecclesiasticus and set it straight, said, no, we're going back to the beginning. We're going to make men actually apply this law and get with the right woman so we're not going through this. And sisters get with the right husband so she's not getting that oops upside her head and she in the ER. Okay. Because sisters don't understand, man. When you get with the wrong person, you don't understand the spirits that's behind it. You end up in captivity. And you know you're being mistreated. And even when you when you consciously as well as subconsciously looking for help, when people come to help you, like I'm going to say this by experience, even the church, we try to step in based on people's approval that they want some advice. And we give them the scriptures to help. And all of a sudden, the sister, the scriptures is out the window. She side with the tyrant anyway. And the church is the bad people. Why? Because to actually be to actually follow through with the advice of the scriptures is too much for her. And that particular spouse is making it difficult on the surface. She ain't got, she don't understand that's the surface. If she would just trust in the most high in Christ, the most high either going to straighten out that situation or going to straighten him out. You're going to end up flat dead. Lord forbid. You understand? When, them, when that sister crying out to the Lord, you don't think the Lord here? And she trusting in the Lord. She patiently trying to deal with this difficult man. That the Lord going to either help that situation out because of her faithfulness. Or he going to deal with that brother. And when he deal with him, it's up to the Lord how he going to deal with him. He may rough him up a little bit so the brother can come to his senses and realize he got a good wife. Or he might just do away with him all together. Lord forbid. We've seen some of that. You see, all right, Israel. So, um, I'm gonna end it there. The 26th chapter is a good chapter as well. Let me see what I got written down for that. Uh, yeah, that's a good chapter as well. So, you can read Ecclesiastes 26 chapter on your own, it's got a lot of good scriptures in there, right? Ecclesiastes 26 and 7 it speaks about the evil wife is a is a yoke shaken to and fro he to have hold of her is as though he had held a scorpion see the other chapter called her a dragon what's a scorpion yeah a poisonous uh, uh creature you get hit by the tail of that scorpion, you might as well be dead the same thing marrying the wrong woman she evil you might as well be dead it's a slow death brother she's she draining the life out of you brother that's why these brothers be uh, anorexic. These brothers be out of order, man. But then check the brothers that got the good wife. She going to make sure he don't go out the house with holes in his pants. Right? She going to make sure he go out the house. Man, he looking healthy. Right? His skin don't look gray. Look at the married brothers as opposed to, to the brothers who got that wicked woman. The brothers got the wicked woman. Man, he looking busted. Right? When the brother got that married woman, he confident, he feel like a man, right? You see? And, and, and that's what attracts them other women because they say, well, hold on. This man got confidence. He's manly. He's about his business. I, I want to see what's making him so happy, right? And so the married brother got to realize that too. They only coming around for covetous reasons. They want to see what's going on. And make a fool out of you and your woman. You got to read the game. Say, nah, nah, nah. What she's seeing, because she carnal, she's seeing that manliness, right, of a man being built up by his woman. And she want to get in on that for the wrong reasons. You got to read that as a husband. Say, nah, nah, sister. We don't get down like that. Okay, you get your own husband based on the wisdom of the most high. Okay, but see, in that sentence, we, we, we down the street. That's a little too much. Okay. We ain't having that kind of conversation. Okay. So, you know, for whatever need to be said, all we talking about is the brother in that situation needs to keep the heads up for sisters who are attracted to married men 
not realizing the spirituality behind it. She's attracted to the manliness because his brother got a wife that built him up, helped build him up through the Lord. Okay, but if you got brothers that don't understand that. So then they go fornicate, do they woman wrong, mess with these whorish women, right? And then on their deathbed, oh, you was the only woman for me. Like that's going, that make the woman more upset. I heard a situation like that. The man old as I don't know, kids from everywhere, did the woman all kind of wrongness, mess with her friends and everything. On his deathbed, he going to tell her some foolishness. You saying that now? So we don't go, we're telling you, man, the Lord catch up to them kind of fornicators. So the 26th chapter is a good chapter, brother, sisters. It speaks about the whoredom of a woman in the ninth verse. It's known in the haughty looks and eyelids. That's that nasty woman, right? That the woman get on stage and show their body, the Beyonce's, the Cardi B. You don't want that kind of woman, brother. You can't control a woman like that. She don't want to be controlled. She want to show your stuff to the world. You want that kind of woman? Some brothers is that dumb because they don't know better. Your woman belong to you. The scripture said in Corinthians 11, the woman was created for the man. And how she's showing all her goods to the world. You's a fool. But society wants you to be a fool. They don't want you to know that basic information that your woman is your woman. And you have the right to say, hey, I don't like that. You need to wear this. Or cover up that or cover up this. And she best to be in, in order and say, yeah, okay, all right, no problem. It's a non-issue. Okay, so it speaks about the shamelessness of a daughter. You hold her in straightly, lest she abuse herself. That's Ecclesiastes 26 and 10. So that 26 chapter, real good chapter. We may have to uh, <laughs> finish. Let's just read it. I think people like this. We got to read this, y'all. All right, so let's read it. Let's read Ecclesiastes 26, first verse to the third verse, and we'll skim through it. So it says, blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. We read about that in Proverbs 31. For the number of his days shall be double. See what she's doing? She added to his life. But the wicked woman taken from his life. He aging quicker. But the righteous woman, the virtuous, she blessing him. That man feel like a man. Second verse, a virtuous woman rejoices of her husband. See, she making him happy, right? The Bible, they, the, the Bible say that the, the woman make the happy husband, man. But society said, happy wife, happy life. They did the reverse. Like Satan did when he, he reversed roles with Adam and Eve. No, the woman's happy when that husband is happy. Because why? That happy husband. It's mutual. He gonna bear the fruits of that and make that woman happy. You understand? Listen, man, my wife make me happy. And I ain't talking about she gotta buy me things and do all the extra curricula. Just be my wife. That we always talk about. And I'm just happy for that. Wake up in the morning, she right by my side. See, go to work, come home, she in the house handling business. That's what makes me happy. And when I'm happy, all praises. We praying together. We rolling together in them scriptures. We do happy things together. You see, it's mutual. So that virtuous woman rejoices of her husband. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see. So I, when I read these things, I said, yes, Lord. I knew I wasn't supposed to marry no high maintenance. We don't marry high maintenance brothers. The high maintenance is for them brothers who are willing to get punked. Okay, your woman's supposed to be low maintenance. Okay. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. So what's that telling us? Those that fear the Lord, the most high join them with a good wife. So what do we got to do, man? We got to fear the Lord. Keep his commandments. And the Lord, the matchmaker, he going to match you with a good wife. But you won't be wicked. You're going to get that dragina. <laughs> Super dragon. 
She going to run all kind of games on the bro. I seen brother, one brother, he was a young brother, and it was an older sister. He, she ran all kind of games on him. All kind of games. Young, right? He was a young brother, just got his life. He was in the early 90s. Um, and he was in the church, right? Younger brother than us. He get a car, get a little money, had a job. But she wanted them ghetto chicks. And she played them, right? She giving them attention, you know, geesing them up. Like we say, geese them up or, or fatten them up, give them all kind of compliments. And once, she, once he hooked up with her, man, she was taking his car. She was doing illegal drug business, right? holding drugs for some other dude. All kinds of stupid stuff. And he the fool, boo-boo the fool. She played him, man. So an evil wife, we had Ecclesiastes 26 and 7. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that have hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. A drunken woman. See, your woman ain't supposed to be drunk, out of control. And a gather abroad, she hanging with all kinds of men, all loose and no discretion. Cause of what? Great anger. Now you embarrassed, you upset. She putting you on blast. Oh, be quiet. You just insecure while she drooling. She falling over on the other man's lap. And you stand there like boo boo the fool. This is what society pushing, though. And she will not cover her own shame, you see, because she drunk. She out of order. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. See, so don't tell women dress whorish. Don't judge me. The Bible been called it. You dress like a whore. You act like a whore. The Bible say you a whore. We ain't said it. The Bible said. So don't be a whore. Learn something, sisters. Make a man treat you like a female. Make that brother learn something. Wait for that brother. You ain't got to know the brother. As we talk in these scriptures now, you ain't got to know this brother. You ain't got to know nobody. All you know is the Lord going to hook you up with the proper brother who fit the proper standards, these scriptures. Other than that, everybody's going to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Don't mess up my life. Keep it moving. That's how you got to think, sisters. So the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, meaning strict. You got to have rules, man. Right? She got chores to do. She got instruction. You got to teach her. We ain't taking no attitudes. None of that. Lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. See, you letting the woman get, the young girl get too much liberty? What the Bible say? Maybe, maybe she might abuse. No, she gonna abuse herself. You say? Watch over an impotent eye and marvel not if she trespass against thee because you got some sis don't listen. You tell them scripture, they don't listen to their parents, man. So it says, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he hath found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. You see? So she loose. Right? So that's what the scripture says. Even when you hold them in straightly, don't be surprised if you have certain sisters from a young age just rebellious. And what the Lord got to work a work in this kind of sister. Because if not, she's on the path of destruction. Ain't nothing good out there. So you're going to get out of it what you put into it, sisters. Okay, so you want to be hard-headed. And do you. You're going to do you all by yourself. You. By yourself. Yeah, you. The grace of a wife delight of her husband. And her discretion. See? Discretion will fatten his bones. She's blessing him. She's building him up just by her being discreet. Got on the right clothing. Okay, not no wardrobe found malfunctions up in the church. Right? We've had that. Sisters come up in the church, dress inappropriate. The husband act like he don't know what's going on. Listen, brother, uh, we got to do a better job. 
The Bible speaks about the discretion of the wife fattens the bones of the husband, make him a better man, adds years to his life. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that? Different from the woman that's full of words. She hurting that man. But the silent and loving one, what do you mean silent? A deaf mute? They ain't talking about no deaf mute. That's talking about a woman who's humble. And when she open her mouth, she gonna open her mouth with wisdom. That's what it said in Proverbs 31. So she is a silent and loving woman, woman, and she's a gift of the Lord. And there's nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. How many of you brothers teach your wife? Or you expect her to learn this Bible on her own? You see? So we're not handling business for some of the brothers in the church. The wife only get taught on the Sabbath days at the church. We got to learn. Right? Sit in there and pray. I don't care if you know two scriptures, teach them two scriptures. A shamefaced and a faithful woman. Shamefaced means uh, like discreet. And faithful woman, that's what you want. She got your back, brother. Is a double grace. And her continent mind. That's how you know she's not a deaf mute. Continent means like stable. Her continent mind cannot be valued. You can't put a price on a woman who got a head on her shoulders, man. She's about the business, man. She's there to help you when you fall. You want the community. You want your wife communicating with you. You don't want a, a parrot and a robot. Some brothers love a robot. Right? I know sisters that were lively and they were they had a very good uh, personality. Then they get with a brother. And the brother, you can see the sister just a whole different sister. She got no, she, she don't talk to nobody. The brother keeps her to himself. He pulling scriptures. Yeah, that's my wife, though. Yeah, but brother, you ain't read these other scriptures, though. Okay. You, when you first met her, was she? What did, what did what did you fall in love with when you first met her? Okay. But as the years go by, you just just crushing that sister's spirit. She just gave up. She just, I don't want no problem. So she's just a robot. You see? And that way you have bro, Stepford. Well, they made that movie, The Stepford Wives. <laughs> Sorry to say, you have some sisters in Israel, they the Stepford Wives. See? And so that, that it's so the, the humility and the woman being subject to her husband, it's not pure. On the surface, it looks like it, but that's not what the scriptures were saying. Ephesians 5, with a woman to be subject to her husband based on the, the Christ, the order of the Christ, not based on the husband's subjection, what he like and what he feel. Listen, man, that can only go but so far. But the scriptures, if, the, if what you like and what you feel got to crush that sister's spirit, that's against the scriptures, man. I haven't seen whole sisters change their whole character for a man. And the brother quote the scriptures, brother, you out of order, man. We can't do things like that. That's a whole person with a soul, a spirit inside of her. And the minute she trying to be who she need to be without breaking the script, you allowed to be who you need to be. But she can't be who she need to be within the range of the scriptures. Like, that's bad. We ain't talking about her breaking scripture. We talking about at least being a person. Like having her own opinion. And she has her own opinion based, you know, within the range of the scriptures. That's what I'm saying. The brother take it. Oh, she disagreed with me. She don't have my back. Okay, so now we're going to look at the brother. What's wrong with you, man? You don't deal with people who disagree with you? Okay, so we see where the problem is. Okay. If a, well, you got a woman that agree with everything you do, brother, that's trouble. The woman's supposed to agree with them scriptures. First and foremost, that's why she's with you. Not with you first, then the scriptures. You see? So, 16. As the sun went and ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife 
in the ordering of her house. See, how many scriptures we got to read about the woman ordering that house well, right? You got brothers, they don't even let the woman deal with the house. I'm going to pick the paint. I'm going to pick the furniture. I'm gonna pick. And you could tell because you, you go to the brother's house and say, okay, uh, this don't got a woman touch to it. <laughs> you know, this brother, you know, he he got Batman on the wall. He, you know, he got the, the Dallas Cowboys. He, what's wrong with this brother? You know, the, the, he, he picked the worst furniture. Let the woman be the woman, brother. It said, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. Let her order the house. That's the scriptures. She going to check with you anyway. She can say, hey, look, I found this and I found that over here. Such, such at the furniture store. Look at these curtains. Such, such. Sometimes you know, let her surprise you, you know. Some brothers, they so controlling. Right? You go to their house, they got two pieces of furniture. Why? Because he won't let the woman be the wife. And it's the furniture he picked out. Okay, brother. <laughs> so you want a robot. You want a maid. That's what you want. You don't want a wife. You want a maid. Listen, man, that is not pr proper for a sister, man. That's not orderly. And these be the first brothers complaining if they ain't get dealt with right. Oh, I'm not treated right. Well, you got no problem treating a woman like a dog. I'm not saying you, whoever shoes fit them feet, I'm just talking, I'm preaching. So as the clear light is upon the holy candlestick, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. So what does that tell you? Marriage is going into your age. Not hooking up for six months and then you with the next woman. As the gold, so now let's skip down. Hold on. I want to skip to the 22nd verse. Here we go. And we'll read to 26 and we'll end the class. So we went a little long, but it was necessary. So Ecclesiastes 26 and 22. And harlot shall be accounted as spittle. See? So society say they, they, the harlot's better than the wife. But the Lord, that don't work with the Lord. The Lord said the harlot is the bottom feeder. She's to be accounted as spit, meaning disgusting. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. So that goes, plays into what we said earlier. How are you going to have a deaf mute for a wife, a parrot, and a, and, a, and a robot? This woman was put on earth to defend, any defend you from any danger, including yourself, brother. But sometimes brothers get, you know, get the quote in scripture. I'm the husband and such. You got to And that's not all the time where you need to start, you know, pulling rank. <laughs> she trying to help you, brother. And you missing the point. So she's meant to be a married. The married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A lot of times the woman ends up marrying the foolishness of that man from his upbringing. Right, so I said, I'm not generalizing, but I said a lot of times. So just understand how I'm saying it. And a lot of times you're going, it's vice versa too, but a lot of times when the, that woman's trying to be a tower against death to her husband, because that brother was spoiled as a child, didn't get enough spankings, didn't get, get, didn't get shown how to be a man, she's now dealing with it. Uh, as an adult, spoil, you know, if he don't get what he want, he start running his mouth, being vicious with his mouth, verbal abuse. Or he can be deal as a hypocrite. What's good for him is not good for her. Doesn't really see what the Lord gave him. And so destroy that sister and treat her bad and not realize what he's doing to her. And then missed the point because now she done gave up the spirit and just do whatever he says. She don't want no problem. Oh, I got a good wife. You ain't got no good wife. You don't treat that woman like dirt for how many years? You you mistaken a robot for a good wife. We got to repent, brothers. This married woman is supposed to be a tower against death to her husband, meaning husband, I love you, but you're wrong on this one. The Lord say this. Can we pray and can we make that move? 
You should be expecting that as a husband. You got some husband. Oh, you ain't got my back. Oh, 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 oh you trying to usurp authority over me. Oh, you supposed... Man, you... And a lot of time, because his mama and his daddy let him get away with dirt from young. So correction is tough because now it's hitting him personally. And that's where he got the problem. So we can't be like that, brothers. Okay. Recognize, analyze, realize, and make the move. But we don't recognize the problem. Then we put burdens on others. It affect people in their spirit. Certain sisters... They don't do they don't take the robot route. They take the the fiery route and start rebelling and bucking back. And then what are the brothers? She's out the spirit. She got the devil in her. That's all he gonna see now, but he don't see his role would led to that. So we we trying to tell you in the wisdom of the most high in Christ, man, your wife was put on earth to help you, even when you can't see right from wrong. Why do you think Sarah helped Abraham? When he was making wrong decision. Does she tell him something? Hey, you, you against me. You supposed to back back me up. Yeah, and Abraham would have broke God's law. We wouldn't have been reading about good things about Abraham. We would have been reading how he went off. So she did the right thing. 23. This please ask us 26, 23. We, we on the home stretch, y'all. So a wicked woman, here we go, a wicked woman again, is given as a portion to a wicked man. You ever see that? Them Bonnie and Clyde type relationships. The man doing drugs and the woman hiding the drugs or counting the money. Right? He's selling drugs and she counting the money. You see? This be that wickedness, man. But a godly woman is given to him that fear of the Lord. You see that? So that show you the Lord, the matchmaker. Now you see why you got to be patient. If you be wicked, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get the wicked woman. If you be godly, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get the godly woman. You got to fear the Lord. Be patient. All right. A dishonest woman. That's one of the worst things. A woman that can't tell the truth. She's slippery. So a dishonest woman contemneth. Contemneth means like despiseth. That's what that word contemneth me to despise. So that dishonest woman contemneth or despiseth shame, meaning humility. The shame in this case is a good context. So she doesn't want that discretion. She despises discretion. But an honest woman will reverence her husband. You see? Well, you got a woman that's going to tell you what it is, right or wrong. Why? Because she's honest. And she's going to say, husband, I messed up today. Okay, what happened? I went to do this and that and, and, and such and such and this and that. All right, no problem. How can we fix it? That's what you want. Well, you got a dishonest woman messing up stuff. And then she say, well, husband, guess what? What? You messed up today. What do you mean I messed? See? Put the blame on the man. A shameless woman shall be counted as a what? Dog. When you see a woman that got no discretion, she bold and aggressive, running her mouth, she showing her body, she, she all out of her element. The Lord said, that's a dog. Now, why would you marry a dog? Nah, you can't lower your standards. She got to learn something, if that. She might never learn. That ain't got no problem with us. This is, this is, go go like I say a wicked man a wicked woman given to that wicked man if you righteous ain't got nothing to do with you but she that is shame face right meaning humility and discretion will fear the Lord a woman that honor her husband shall be judged wise of all but she that dishonor him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all see that's that woman that through her pride she won't listen to him she throwing tantrums. She defrauding him sexually. She playing games, slick games. That's her pride. And she dishonors him. She talking to him crazy. She condescending to him. She waiting for him to give in. Because since he gave in all them other times. You see? And these brothers don't figure it out. So, okay, let me just keep giving in. Maybe she'll change. Listen to yourself. 
You keep doing the same thing when you want to expect a different outcome, it ain't going to happen. So for the sisters, the Bible telling us, you can't have that dishonor through your pride. Okay, you got to humble down and be a wife to your husband. Now for the single brothers and the single sisters, this is all the wisdom before you even in the situations. And that's what these series of classes was about. So in conclusion, marriage is a weighty matter. Our marriages should be based on the most high Christ, prayer and faith, not lust. We look to be with our spouse, not only for the life we live on this particular uh, earth, but at Christ's second coming, we to be heirs together unto the grace of life. When that kingdom of heaven, which is to be played out upon earth, like it tells us in Daniel 7, for the kingdom and the greatness of the kingdom and the dominion of the kingdom shall be given. This is under the whole heaven, not in the heaven and the sky, under the whole heaven shall be given to the saints of the most high. That's what's saying Daniel 7. So Abraham and Sarah in that kingdom to come are to be, they're going to be known as husband and wife in that kingdom. Not individuals. Okay, so marriage carries over into the kingdom, Israel. Now, you know somebody got to be worthy of that to be with you. Because if you want that kingdom and you want your spouse to be with you in that kingdom, then you got to have the right person. And that takes prayer, patience, and faith, trusting that the Lord know what he's talking about. Okay. Now, like we said, we can't turn back the clock and go backwards, but what we can do is repent and move forward. And that's what these classes was about. What we don't want to do is repeat matters and fornicate and so on. All right, Israel. So we love you with the love of the Lord. And so the Most High in Christ bless you all. We'll end with a prayer. Let's meditate. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahweh Shai the Christ, have mercy upon us. And let this word be received in our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Guide us. Show us. That in our decision making, we may make, we may make life altering decisions for the good and the glory of thy holy name and not for the detriment of us. Father, in the name of Christ, forgive us our sins of the past, but bless us in this endeavor that for the married, we may have marriages that are built upon that rock. And for the unmarried, we may look for the marriages in time to come that is built upon that rock being Yahweh Shai the Christ. Thank you, Father, in the name of Christ for all things. Amen. All right, Israel, so we love you with the love of the Lord. Go with God. My name's Brother Aram of the Boston Church. We preach the Apostles' Doctrine, which is another word, say the gospel. Another way of saying it. All right, Shalom.